Hello and welcome to the Lost Caverns of Ixalan set review, limited set review. Um, today I'm going to be going over all the cards that are white in the set, so you know, commons, uncommons, rares, mythics, all that stuff. Um, I'm going to be talking about how good I think they are in limited. Note that this does not incorporate any uh, constructed stuff, like I'm not a constructed player, so I'm not going to be talking about that at all. It's going to all be about their limited and then more specifically draft viability. So without further ado, um, I'm going to get right into it. First, let me just very quickly display the way that I grade cards. I have five tiers. Uh, feel free to take a look at what the tiers mean. Uh, basically, tier one is the best, tier five is the worst. Um, fairly simple. Um, I like to keep it simple, but uh, yeah. So first card we have here is Abdullo's Awakening. It is X, three, and a white for a sorcery. Return target artifact or non aura enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield with X. Additional plus one plus one counters on it. It's a 1 1 spirit with flying and it's into its other types. So, this is a really, really weird card um, and very difficult to understand, like, actually how good it is. Because at its core, your force, like, you. <laughs> like, you're returning an artifact or enchantment, but you're forcing it to be a 1-1 one, one flyer, which is actually like, is probably a downside in most cases, because it means that your opponents can kill it more easily. And then, but, like, the upside is that you can pump it a bunch, and then you have, like, a larger flyer that also has, like, other text on it. It's a very strange card, and I don't think it's going to be very good. Um, I think there maybe are some niche decks where it's, like, you have something super important that you really want to be able to get back, so, like, maybe you could play this. That's why it's not tier 5, but yeah, I don't think this is, like, a very good card or anything. Acrobatic Leap, single white mana for an instant. Uh, target creature gets plus 3, or plus 1, plus 3, and gains flying until end of turn, untap it. So this is just a classic. Um, we've seen this trick a couple of times. It's basically my, like, this is, like, the perfect definition of a tier 3 card. If you want to know what a tier 3 card looks like for me, this is basically the perfect definition of, of that. Um, there's always, like, decks that want this, and it is always going to be undervalued slightly, especially on Arena. Like, people just undervalue this card, this type of card. Um, it's almost never wrong to play, like, in your deck, like, one copy. Like, it almost is, like, never bad. Uh, like, you could, like, you probably, like, if you're good at the game, like, if you're, if you're a really good player, you can probably get more equity out of playing something else. But if you're, like, not, like, you probably should just be playing this, because it, it's just it's just a solid card that always does what you want and is cheap and efficient and interacts with the board. So, adaptive gem guard three and a white for a three three with the ability to tap two untapped artifacts and or creatures you control. Put a plus one plus one counter on it and you can activate this only as a sorcery. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I for one don't like four mana three threes. It's truly just kind of insulting at this point that we keep getting cards like this where it's just, well, I hope that I have all this extra stuff lying around and just am able to just tap all my stuff at sorcery speed to grow this. If this, there's a number of cards in this set where I'm like, just just let it off the leash and be an instant, guys. Like, just, just let the activation be an instant and see if the card is actually too good. Like, I don't, like, it's not going to be too good for anything other than draft. So, like, just, just let it off. Like, I don't know. I, uh, I, I'm not a huge fan. Obviously, you can tap itself, right? So you can tap itself to grow it. I, I just am not. Like, the, if, again, the sorcery speed really kills it. If you could do this not at sorcery speed, it would actually be interesting, but just having to, like, tap yourself out is just so bad. Attentive Sunscribe. One and white for a 2-2. Two, two. When it becomes tapped, scry one. Um, I actually kind of like this card. Uh, originally, I started a little lower on it, but I think I, I I'm... The more I've looked at the set, the more I've been like, you know, like, th it does, like, you can use this to craft, and it attacks and scries, which is kind of nice. You can tap vehicles and scry, which is nice. The, the scry does add up, like, you, you are going to probably get two or three scries out of this over the course of a game if you play it on two, which is, is pretty pretty substantive, and you, you kind of get them when you want them. Obviously, it's not the best to be scrying on, like, turn three. You really want to be scrying on, like, turn six, turn seven type deal, but... It certainly isn't the worst. Um, you do have more information on what you want than just with your opening hand, where you pretty much just want to draw, you know, cards, and it doesn't really matter what they are. Um, and I think this just just fits enough like places that it's going to be replaced, like just totally fine, and not like 
worse. Th not like you're not going to be like super unhappy to have this in your deck. Basically, is kind of my my view on it. Bat colony. Two and a white for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, create a one-one black creature token with flying for each mana from a cave spent to cast it. And whenever a cave enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Uh, I will certainly not start. I'm like the the cave. All of the cave cards for me are cards that I am going to need to see succeed in order for me to be like excited about them. They just I just don't like I can't envision it in my mind that them actually being good because you just have to t spend so many picks on lands for this to be a functional card like you want this card to come down on turn three right the, the best case scenario for this is you make three bats with it when you cast it the odds of that happening on turn three are like almost zero so like how often is the the case that is like you're acceptable which is two bats and that happens like you need to have a lot of caves you need to have like I want to say like ten caves, like ten. Like, I I I genuinely think you might want to have like ten. Like it that it's a lot. That might even be too many. You might only need like seven. But I, like to have two like, by turn. It doesn't have to be on turn three, but like it kind of does because this gets worse as the game goes on. And like you want to play like you you want like the ideal way that this card goes is you play it on three with three caves, and then every turn you're just playing more caves. Of course, that's never happening. It's just not happening. I don't know. I actually, I had this lower, and then I moved it up a little bit because I was like, ah, the floor isn't like that. But, like, if you do have like ten caves in your deck, this is probably fine. Like, you can probably actually play it, and it's not like the worst lingering souls impression ever. Um, there are a lot of caves. Like originally, I was, I was like, oh, there's actually enough caves. There, there are. There's common caves, and there's going to be uncommon and rare caves. Like you're, you, you're going to be able to draft some number of caves, especially early. Like. If this strategy is functional the first week of the format, you're going to be able to draft it, and it's going to be good. I have questions about its vi viability beyond that, if it is even viable there to begin with, which I, I, I'm not starting it there. But, um, yeah. Clayfired Bricks. So when Clayfired Bricks enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, put it in your hand, you shuffle and gain two life, and you can pen, pay five and two white to craft, which means you're exiling this and another artifact. In this particular case, you're crafting with, or exiling the thing that you're crafting with. And in this case, it transforms into the backside, which is an artifact that enters the battlefield, then creates two 1-1 one, one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens, and the creature, you, and then it has, it basically it's an emblem. The creatures you control get plus one, plus one. I like this card quite a bit. I actually might move it, I could have moved it up even higher. There are some concerns. Um, gaining two life is very helpful, actually. So... Like, the thing that's good about this card is that you can, you don't have the, you're, you're not legally obligated to use this side of the craft. You can actually just use this to craft with other stuff, which is nice. Um, getting an additional land, always good. You are, like, um, hitting your land drops on time up until, all, like, five. Basically, if you play this on three, you're kind of guaranteed to hit lands till your fourth land. Like, on time until turn four, which is pretty valuable in a lot of games, and... It is certainly um, not an aggressive card. <laughs> that, that is, this is not a card that you just want in every deck. Is the one thing that I would call it. like. It is obviously not designed for that. This is a this is a mid range card through and through. Or I mean, you can put it put it in your control decks. I don't really control isn't really like it. I don't know. It it does exist, but we'll have to see in this format. This is this is, you know, I, that's sort of the one concern I have is like, hey, you know, sometimes you want to like maybe the format is just like, hey, I need to have a two drop and this is not a two drop, so be advised. Cosmium Blast. One and a white for an instant, deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. I don't think it's meaningfully better that this deals four instead of the usual three, to be honest with you. The, that was never really the issue. I think the issue is more of that like you just can't kill what you want when you want to. Um Yeah. Again, like works as a slower card more than a faster card. So I'm just these, these type of cards just aren't ever interesting to me, to be honest with you. Except for one, and then we'll see in a bit. Dauntless Dismantler, one on the white for one four artifacts. Your opponents can control enter the battlefield. Tet. I should actually move this up to tier three. This is a tier three card. I forgot that this is. I for some reason thought this was three mana. It's only two mana uh, for a one four. So that's like kind of huge. I mean, it is. Not really doing anything. Like, artifacts your opponent's control under the battlefield tap. That's, like, that's somewhat relevant, but not really. And then you can pay X and whatever sacrifice to destroy each artifact. 
uh, mana value X. Which is, like, fine, or whatever. I don't know, I should, I should move this up to tier 3. It's fine. I don't think it's, I don't think it's great or anything. Hold on, let me pause and do that. Magic, I moved it up to tier 3. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's just, the the rate the, the rate is too good for me to have this at uh, at tier 4. It just is like a 2-mana 1-4 that makes your opponent's life a little bit more miserable, which is nice. So, I don't know. It seems decent. It blocks very well. Deconstruction Hammer. Single white mana for an equipment. Equip creature ha gets plus 1, plus 1, and has 3, ta three taps. Sacrifice the hammer, destroy target artifact, or enchantment, and equip 1. Uh, I like this quite a bit. I'm I'm a short sword enjoyer, you know, uh, average short sword enjoyer. Um, which this is a short sword, and for all intents and purposes, um, a lot of equipment in this set just generally. So there is some concern about like you kind you, there is a like a basically a hard cap of equipment you can have in your deck, and the, the actual the hard cap is like three. You can you really it does start to become diminishing returns after like. Like, basically, if you're ever playing a second equipment onto the battlefield, it is kind of a nightmare. Unless it's Bard Batter Fist, which we respect. We love Bard Batter Fist here. Um, but yeah, this, this card... You know, there are a lot of artifacts. There just are. And this equipment, just allowing you to deal with those in, like, the mid-game is, is really nice. And it's it's pretty low cost. Like, having the first copy of this in your deck is, is fairly low cost. Um, because the... the the, the miss, the fail case, is, is somewhat reasonable uh, as just a short sword. Um, Dusk Rose Reliquary, single white mana for an artifact. It's additional cost to cast the spell, sacrifice an artifact or creature. It has Ward 2. When it enters the battlefield, exile target artifact or creature and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. Um, so this is just a removal, hard removal spell. The It is it is one mana, which is nice. Like I'll, I'll say that. Having to sacrifice stuff is pretty bad. Like it, it's pretty garbage. To, like <sighs> this card, this card is very difficult to, to grade because I don't think there's going to be actually that much just random stuff that you're going to have lying around. Like unlike in Wilds of Eldraine, you're not just going to have random stuff just on the battlefield all the time. Um. So, it's it's perhaps going to be more difficult to, like, have something to sacrifice that's actually that you're that you feel acceptable with, and they can just like get it back eventually. I know it's Ward too, but like, I mean, like you're you're getting a pretty big mana advantage, assuming you have like free stuff to get rid of. But I just don't know how much free stuff you're actually gonna have to get rid of. Either way, I think it's going to be playable just because it's it is one mana and one mana spells are good. So that's kind of my key takeaway from this card. Envoy of the Okenic. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm just gonna. You know what? I gave up on pronouncing this card halfway through, and that's that's okay. Two and a white for a three three with the ability four and a white to create a one one colorless gnome token. Um, I think if you're activating this ability, it's probably a bad sign. But also, it's not like it's not the worst. Like, this could end up being one of those formats where you just start, like, double activating this at some point, and you just win, eventually. Um, the one, the, the concern that I have is that it just doesn't matter at all that you have this ability. Um, but I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of optimistic that this can, can be functional as a 3-drop. It may end up just being too bad, just be, like, whatever, like, doesn't actually fit anywhere, and you don't ever actually want it. You never have enough mana that this is, you know, interesting. But, I don't know. I have some optimism about it. Fabrication Foundry. One and a white for an artifact. You can tap it to add white mana. Spend this mana only to cast an artifact spell or activate an ability of an artifact source. And you pay two and a white and tap it. Exile one or more other artifacts you control with total mana value X. Return target artifact card with mana value X or less. Um, from... Your graveyard to the battlefield. You activate that only as a sorcery. So I don't know. I think this card's really bad, um, as you can see by my rating of it. The problem I have with this card is that two mana rocks are like not good in limited, and this one is restricted. 
And then, like, yes, you can do this weird thing to, like, reanimate your stuff, but, like, then your stuff has to have died, and you have to have other stuff that you don't really want that's kind of expensive, because you have to be able to actually pay the cost of the thing that you want to get back. And I, I don't know, it, I'm just, just really off it, to be honest with you. Family reunion, one in a white for an instant. You can choose one, Kijuji Control got plus one, plus one until end of turn, or Kijuji Control got hands proof until end of turn. So, this is an interesting card, and I like this card, this this design here. Um, the second mode is very awkward, is one thing I'll say about it. Like, you kind of don't really have the ability to just be holding up two mana anymore in Limited. And, the, like, the first mode is the mode that I think you're going to be using the majority of the time. My question is, is the second mode actually versatile enough that you can afford to put this card in your deck? And I'm giving there's there some hope that that is the case. You would all, I honestly don't think you'd ever want more than one of these. But, like, I, is it is it really that bad just, like, two mana, give your creatures you control, plus one, plus one, until under turn? Probably not. Again, I don't think there's, like, that much token-y wide, go wide stuff in the set, but... You only need to hit, like, three creatures for this to be, like, super good. And if it hits two, it's, like, not a nightmare. So, there is the four mana, like, flyer that makes a 1-1. One -one. We'll get to that in a bit. So, th there's some, but... Uh, I don't know. I, I just think the versatility is nice here. And I do have some hope for this card, basically. Get lost. One in a white for an instant. Destroy target creature, enchantment, or planeswalker. Its controller creates two map tokens. Um, so we've seen this type of effect before, uh, in, I think it was at Midnight Hunt, where the, you did this, but your, the opponent created a clue token. Two map tokens is probably better on average than a clue token, and by probably, I mean almost certainly, like, it definitely is, and, like, most scenarios better, because you could draw two cards, like, theoretically, uh, and, like, you can also, like, just, you have more choice with the map tokens, basically, and you have two of them, and there are two game objects and whatnot. So it is going to be worse than that card. And that card was, like, whatever, it was fine. It wasn't great or anything, but it was certainly playable. And I think this will be playable. You know, instant speed, two mana, just destroy anything is is a good enough effect in a color that doesn't really get that, that you are, you're happy to, I think you're going to be okay playing this. Now, again, it, it does come with a cost, like, be advised, but I, I think that you're still going to probably want this. Glorifier of Suffering. Two and a white for a 3 2. When Glorifier of Suffering enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature or enchant or artifact. When you do, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Note that it can target itself, which is why, which is something I really like about this. Um, there are some like sacrifice y theme type stuff going on, and especially black white. Um, so again, like you, you do need to have things that exist, but there's like this one, the, there's the gnome that you saw at the. Uh, on the start of the slideshow here, um, that is one thing you'd want, and you only, so, the, the issue is that you do need to enable this, but I think if you, ena like, if you enable this, this card is really good, uh, cause again, like, it's a three mana, four, three, that makes another one of your creatures bigger, if you have something to sacrifice, so, and it, the fact that it can sacrifice artifacts is actually, like, really huge, cause if you couldn't, I think this card would just be terrible. But because you can sacrifice artifacts, and there are many ways to make, like, trinkety whatever artifacts, and having artifacts in your graveyard isn't even that bad because you can just craft them later, makes me like this card. I think it actually has a chance. And I also like 3-mana three 3-2s. Three That's also... I'm the 3-mana three 3-2 three guy. I like 3-mana three 3-2s. Three it's one of my favorite stat lines. Guardian of the Great Door. White, white for a 4-4 four, four as an additional cost. 4-4 four, four flying. As an additional cost to cast this spell, tap four untapped artifact creatures and or lands you control. So basically it's six mana 4-4 four, four flyer. But you can, it has convoke, kind of. But it has better convoke. It has convoke and um, improvise. Um, they could actually have templated it like that. I don't know. Maybe I would have done that. I mean, obviously you can't really do that because there's no other cards in the set that have either of those keywords, so it doesn't really make any sense. But yeah, you, it's basically that, templating. Just historical consistency, okay? I just like consistency. But yeah, I think this card has some decks where it can be okay. I, uh, 
If this were a four mana double pipped flyer, how good would it be? I still don't like. I don't think it would be great. Like the Archon in the last set wasn't like bust. Like it was good. It was a good card, and that like made your other stuff bigger too. Like I, it'd be like a like if this if this just cost four. Like if this if you what is a vanilla four mana four four flyer like grade wise? It's probably a tier two card. So I think this is probably worse than that card by a little bit. Although I guess you can reanimate it. I don't know. There's some tricky stuff you could do with it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wait to see on this one. Take a wait and see approach on this on this card. Similarly, the next card, return target creature card uh, uh, with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. It's a single white mana. Uh, does combo with the last card. There's a combination there. You can get you can get that thing into the graveyard somehow, and then you can reanimate it for one mana. It's, it's not bad. It's not a not a bad thing to be doing. I'm sure it will be. Uh, thing that happens. They are both uncommons, though, so that's concerning. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the, the efficiency is not to be overlooked here. Like, one mana to get a three mana spell back is certainly a big game, even in the mid middle part of the game. Like, uh, the most common cost of cards and decks, of magic cards, is like three, so you, you have a lot of things that cost three you can get back, usually. Iron Paw Aspirant. One and a white for one two. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. So this is basically just a two mana three two three, which is pretty good. And sometimes it's better than that. So I like it. This is, works well with like sacrifice themes. If you have a one drop or if you don't have a one drop, like you even like you just this is just a good like you put this like put the counter wherever. It just is really good. So I, I like the flexibility of this card. Solid two drop. Kinjali's Drawn Runner. Two and a white for one one double striker. When it enters the battlefield, it explores. Um So the three minute two two double striker is just not a very good card, and we've seen this time and time again. Like they just print three minute two two double strikers all the time. And this is like Like yes, explorer's nice because you can draw a land. And like drawing cards is good. But if you miss on this Explorer, it's actually like a nightmare. Because again, a 3-mana 2-2 Double Striker is not a good card. Yes, you're getting something that you're probably putting in your graveyard every single time, but even, like, the, the, imagine the nightmare scenario of this where like, you have to, you want to keep the card on top of your library. Which almost never happens, but like, it can happen sometimes. And then... Like, so this just becomes a 3 minute 2 double striker look at the top card of your library, which is just so bad. It's so bad. Like, that's such a bad card. I don't know. Like, 3 minute 2 to double strike scry 1 wouldn't even be good. And this is, like, a... maybe better than that? I don't I, I, I don't know. It's probably okay, but I, I just am I'm not super thrilled about this. Choose Tails Flanker. Two and a white for a 3 1 with Flash. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Put a plus one plus one counter on it for each creature that left the battlefield under your control this turn. You gain two life and scry two. And exile target player's graveyard. Uh, exile graveyard is actually very meaningful here. Um, this art scares me. I'm just going to keep it real with you. Um, I'm very scared when I look at this art. I want to move on. I'm, I'm frightened. Um. I think honestly, like the gain two scratch two is probably the best mode. Just do that and then block something for three mana. It's not not so bad. It's just not so bad. Um, allows you to hold up other things. So yeah, I don't know. I like this card. Solid card. Malamet War Scribe. Three white white for a four three when it enters the battlefield. Creatures you control get plus two plus one until end of turn. Uh, I the more I feel like I started this a lot lower. But, like, I sort of thought about it, and I was like, wait a minute. This card is, like, really cool. Because, again, just think about, like, what do you need for this card to be good? Well, you need to hit two things for this card to be, like, in... Like, if this hits two creatures, it's actually insane. If this hits a creature, it's not even, like, that bad. Like, it really isn't that bad. If this only hits one creature. Because, like, five mana, four, three, yeah, it's not great. But at least you're getting like a good, like a very big attack. Like you're getting a good attack in. It's not a complete nightmare. Um, I, I don't know. I kind of like this card. Um, again, it, it's only for like there. There are decks that want it and decks that don't. Right? Like you're gonna have decks that don't want this card, 
and so I probably should rate it a little bit lower, just because it, it is like a, it is like it doesn't go in every deck card, but this is just such a beating. Like, this card is just such a, like, they print cards, there's, there's like, Inspired Charge, which is just this, but it costs one less mana, and doesn't have a, doesn't come with a 4-3. Like, this, this card just seems kind of crazy to me, to be honest. Um, because, like, it's just a lot of, it's just a lot of power. Like, that's just a lot of damage. I don't know. I like it. Market no ma. Single white mana for an O3. When it dies, you gain one life and draw a card. And when it is exiled from the battlefield while you're activating a craft ability, you gain one life and draw a card. So basically, this is like perfect sack fodder and defends early. Perfect little glue card, uncommon. You're really going to want this prioritized really highly. It might even be tier 1, to be honest with you. I, I could see moving this up to tier 1. Um. It just seems, seems really, really solid to me. So, yeah, I, I just... The gnome is uh, the gnome is going to be a staple, I think. Might of the Ancestors. Two and a white for an enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature gets, you control gets plus two, plus seven game vigilance until end of turn. So this is this is about as bad, in my opinion, as the red one that gave haste in Lord of the Rings. It's obviously better than that, because the haste just like only matters once, whereas this can do multiple times, and the vigilance is kind of good, because you still get to block, and yada, 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 whatever. I'm starting low on this type of, this effect. These type of effects tend to, under, like, be worse than they look. Just because, like, think about what you're giving up, right? Like, yes, if you play a two drop into this, you're, you're probably okay, because you still get to attack, but you did give up your three drop, and then, like, when you play your four drop, it's still not doing anything. I don't know. And, like, a lot of, a lot of two drops, these, like, the best stat line in two mana is a two, two, and a three, one. And those can just already trade with each other without this. So, like, you're not actually attacking past two drops with your two drop, generally. Because you just still trade, and they're just like, yep, happy to trade. Like, you just don't have anything to attack me with anymore. So, this, this actually, I think, is, is, is pretty bad. Miner's Guide Wing. Single white mana for a 1-1 one, one flying vigilance. Uh, when it dies, target creature you control explores. Um, dies triggers are very bad, especially on creatures that require you to have other creatures around. That's kind of it. There's like just not really anything else to say. Yes, flying and vigilance are nice. This wears equipment well, so I'm gonna give it. A, I'm gonna leave it in tier three. I think it's a fine card. I think it's playable. Dying into exploring is kind of nice. You can chump with it and do other stuff. Like you, again, the equipment thing is real. So, I don't know. I, I I'm semi optimistic about this card being playable, but again, like the, the die's trigger here is is really tough. Mischievous pup, two and a white for a three one with flash when it enters the battlefield. Return up to one target, non land permanent you control to its owner's hand. So this is just a nice little interesting card. Uh, a lot of play here. You can return something that's going to get removed. You can block, flash this in to block their three drop or something. You can get value. It's always nice to bounce stuff to your hand and just get value. So I don't know. Seems seems solid to me. But the the, the body is pretty bad. Like a, a three mana three one is pretty garbage. It's pretty garbage. They're, they're not as bad as they just were. Like, I have I have Scars from the last set, which is, like, one toughness is so bad because of all the good stuff. But this set is not going to be as bad. There's dead weight, but dead weight hits two toughness, too, so it doesn't really matter too much. Ozier Tak, Deepest Foundation. Four white weight for a 6-6 six, six with Vigilance. If one or more to creature tokens would be created under your control, three times that many are, are created instead. When it dies, return to the battlefield tapped and transformed under its owner's control. Um, and it transforms into this land, and you can pay two and a white and transform it only if you attack with three or more creatures this turn and only as a sorcery. I probably should move this lower, actually. Like, a six man is, like, six man is six six vigilance is pretty large. Like, it's kind of keyword large, so it is going to be difficult for your opponents to remove. That's why I'm leaving it in tier threes. I'm just like, hey, it's a six man of six six that can attack and also block, and that's kind of it. And it is also hard for your opponents to get rid of because eventually you just get it back. But if you're getting it back, are you just kind of winning? You're attacking with three creatures, and like it's fine. And, like you have to pay it. So so it is kind of tough to give it to get it back. But um, you know, I mean, it, it comes back eventually, and 
it uh you know it can do that it's it's medium it's it doesn't really the creature token part of this card does not matter old tech archaeologists four and white for a four four when it enters the battlefield choose one return target artifact card from your favorite to your hand or scry three so i think this card's fine um it is a five drop so there are concerns like you can't have too many of them and like for that reason like it gets demoted a little bit um I do think the first ability matters, and I do think the second ability also matters. So I do like the actual real like flex flexibility here. But um, yeah, it is five mana. Ultech Cloud Guard, three and a white for a two two three two flyer. When it enters the battlefield, you create a one one colorless gnome artifact creature token. So I think this is white's best common. Just having looked over the commons, um, really solid card. Just two, two, two bodies for four mana. You get flying too. Like usually, this is like a three, four mana, three, three, no flying, make a one, one. Like I don't know. Like just giving it flying just seems like a lot for one toughness. Now one toughness, you know, n nothing to sneeze at, but blocks similarly well. And um, yeah, I, I think this is just a really good card. Otika, ot, uh, uh, Autoclan Landmark. Single white mana for an artifact when it enters the battlefield, scry two. You can craft to make it a 1 4 flying. Um, when it attacks, target creature, attacking creature without flying gains flying. I don't think you're ever going to be doing that. I think you're just going to use this to craft with stuff and just use it to scry two. Or like you sacrifice it. I kind of like this as just like, hey, you put it on the battlefield, you sacrifice it, it does stuff, like you get scry out of the deal. Like, I don't know, I kind of like it. It's like a reverse, like, hopeless nightmare. <laughs> you get the scry up front. And then you get to make something uh, on, on the back side of it, which I, I think is nice, actually. Petrify! One and a white for an enchantment aura. It uh, Enchant artifact or creature, enchanted permanent, can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. So it's a rest, basically. It's pretty good. It's two mana. It'll be solid. I had it lower, I moved it up. There's not... I mean, actually, you know what? I should move it back down, because there is a bunch of sacrifice stuff in this set. So actually, I should move this back down to tier three because I forgot. That's one thing that I forgot to uh, forgot to check is the number of sacrifice things. Hold on, one moment. Production the magic of production value. Um, like the hitting artifacts thing is nice though, but I have again I've moved it down because there is like black and white both have sacrifice themes, so this is going to be a bit tough in those scenarios where it's like and you just gave me value in my thing. Um, so it's pretty bad. Like, the one, the the counterpoint to that would be, hey, I don't really want my removal to put stuff in the graveyard because that's also bad. But I think that that the sacrifice themes outweigh. Now the sacrifice cards might just be too bad, so there's that. But I, I I'm gonna move it back down a little just because I do have concerns. Quicksand whirlpool, five and a white for an instant. This spell costs three less to cast if it's targets a tapped creature. Exile target creature. Yep. I've seen this before a million times. I know that this one's an instant, and they've been sorceries sometimes. Whatever. I just don't. I can't. I really just. I genuinely just can't be asked. Like you can play this if you really want to. Um, I'm not going to be playing it much. So. Resplendent Angel, one white white for a three three flying. At the beginning of each end step, if you gained five or more life this turn, create a four four white angel. If you're joking with flying and vigilance, you can pay three white 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 to give it. Plus two, plus two, and lifelink, so it triggers its own ability. Um, yep, nice card. Uh, being double pipped is really bad, and that is digging it an entire tier. This would be tier one if it was not double pipped. It is double pipped, and so it is now in tier two instead of tier one, because double pipped means it's very difficult to cast on three in some scenarios. Um, you really want to have ten sources. You probably even want, like, eleven if you're, like, actually, like, really want to be able to cast it on turn three reliably. Uh, limited mana bases do not support that, so... You're stuck with nine, and it's going to be tough to cast on turn three sometimes, and you're going to be upset about it. So, that's that's the deal. Ruin Lurker Bat. Single white mana for a 1-1 one, one flying lifelink. At the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, scry one. Nice little card here. Doing a bunch of stuff, you know, descended, you know, scrying for free, lifelinking, flying, you know, all kinds of nice little keywords. Whereas, again... If equipment is good, this card gets even better. I don't 
have high hopes for equipment generally, but you know, this is the perfect thing to be using the equipment. So, um, just a really nice little one drop. Sort of reminds me of the the fairy from uh, Wilds of Eldraine. Um, similar, similar vibes. That card was really good. This card should be similarly good. Sanguine Evangelist. Two and white for two one with battle cry. Um, when it enters the battlefield or dies, create a one one black creature token with flying. This seems pretty good to me. I originally had it a little lower, and then I was like, well, I mean, it makes so many things, and like making a bunch of things is just really good with all of white's cards, and like making a flyer, and then it makes a second flyer when it dies, and then it buffs your entire team when it attacks. And if you can protect it, it's even better. Which, I, I don't know, I, I just kind of thought that there was enough stuff going on here that I was like, you know what, I'm going to bump this up to tier 1 and see how we feel about it. And maybe I'll end up regretting that decision, but I, I do think this is a pretty good card, considerably better than um, the other cards uh, that we've seen that are not tier 1. Soaring Sandwing. 4 white white for a 3 5 flying, when it enters the battlefield you gain 3 life, it has plane cycling for 2. Um, we got... We got hoodwinked and bamboozled and led astray by the cyclers, the two mana cyclers earlier this year, and I will not I will not let it happen to me again. You hear me? It's not gonna happen a second time. I will not believe in these cards until they actually prove to me that they're good. Unlike last time where I was like, Cycling Oh my god, oh my god, it's the best mechanic ever. It's so good. You can pay two mana to do nothing on turn two and it's, it's like functional. The answer is no, you actually can't. Um, and so this, these cards um, are getting dinged for that, for the sins of their predecessors. Um, they will be better in this set, though, because there is Descend and stuff, so these trigger Descend when you cycle them, which is nice. That is a nice little thing that can happen, and it does matter, and that makes them slightly better, because doing it on, like, turn four actually like, can do something instead of just doing absolutely nothing. The card itself is whatever. It's a 6-mana 3-5 flyer that gains you through life, which is kind of nice. Like, it does kind of stabilize you, but... I, I, uh, <laughs> Spring Loaded Saw Blades. One and a white for an artifact with flash when it enters the battlefield. It deals 5 damage to target tapped creature and opponent controls, and you can craft with artifact for 3 and a white. It becomes this vehicle. It's a 5-5 five five vehicle that has crew 1, or you can crew it basically crew it by tapping two other untapped artifacts you control. Um, yeah, this card's just cracked, truly. Uh, really and truly cracked. You get a piece of material on the board, you get a removal spell, you get the ability in the late game to make a very good vehicle. Um, I'm kind of surprised this isn't a rare, to be honest with you. It's really strong, in my opinion. Um, I think it is... It might be White's best card. It's really good. Uh, like, genuinely. Like, it, it genuinely seems to me to be really, really strong. Um, just, just the fact that, like, you, like, a yes, like, yes, the opponent's creature has to be tapped. Yes, I understand this. However, the upside on, like, the, the downside on this is, like, not that high. Because, like, you... You could just play it on... Even if you just played it on your turn after they attacked you and killed their thing for two mana and then had the ability to craft or use this to craft or, like, trigger, like, artifact enter the battlefield stuff. Like, I really like this card. I think this card's really good. Thousand Moons Crack Shot. One and a white for a 2-2. Two -two. When it attacks, you may pay two and a white when you do tap target creature. We've seen it before, it tends to be not very good, it's a 2-drop, you'll play it, whatever. You can play it, it's a 2-drop, sure. Kinda wish it were a 3-1, if this were a 3-1, I'd be much more interested. It is not a 3-1. I, could they not have, could they not have made this a 3-1, like, really? Could they really not have, like, I think a 3-1 here would be kind of, like, juicy, you know? Be like, mmm, spicy. At a 2-2, two -two, though, I'm just kinda like, eh, eh, you know? Thousand Moons Infantry. 2 and a white for a 2-4, you may, it untaps during each other player's untap step. Like, whatever, man, it's fine. I'm probably never going to play it, the stats aren't that bad. There's a bunch of, like, tap synergies that you can tap your stuff, as you saw throughout this so far. Where you can be like, oh, I can tap this creature to, like, cast my spell a little bit cheaper. Um, 
I don't know. It, it just seems like too finicky for it to be good, and a 3 mana 2 4 is horrendous. Thousand Moons Smithy. Two white white for an artifact. Um, when it enters the battlefield, create a white gnome soldier artifact creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures you control. So it's a 2-2 to start. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you may tap 5 untapped artifacts and or creatures you control if you do transform it, and it transforms into a land that can produce white mana. It also has a static ability. Whenever you cast an artifact or creature using mana produced by this land, create a white gnome soldier creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures you control. So the land is uber busto, like uber busted. You just start making it car like basically like how good is a Karnstruct? Like, how much mana would you pay to make a Karnstruct in limited? And in this set, I think you're willing to pay 4 mana, and um, unfortunately you do have to tap only during your pre-combat main phase, but you can just play this um, and then tap tap 5 things. You already have, you can tap itself, so you have 1 thing, you, have, you create 2 things that you can tap, and you just need 3 more things, um, yeah, I mean, certainly do, certainly achievable. And then once you transform this, if you ever cast an artifact spell, you literally just win instantly. Like, if you ever cast something and make another gnome token, it's just over. Like, you just are winning the game straight up because you're just going to gain so much advantage. Um, and actually, it casts on artifacts and creatures, which is, this is, the land is busted. If you can, if you find, if you can make this, this land happen consistently, this card is just absurd. Just completely absurd. Um, so maybe this is ended up being tier one. The problem is, again, it is a little bit slow. Like, if on turn four, you don't have anything on the board, and you just play this, you're probably going to lose, because it's just a 2-2. But... Like, some, ideally, you probably have one creature, and that's a 3-3, three, three, and it's not that much of a nightmare if it trades off. It's still kind of a nightmare, but at least you are getting, like, a thing that is a thing on the battlefield that you can sacrifice if you have to, to, like, craft or something. Um, it's going to be painful, but you will have to do that sometimes. And I, you know, I, I do like this, the flexibility here. Tinker's Tote, two white and a white for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one, colors, artifact gnome creature tokens, and you can sacrifice it and gain three life. I kind of like this card and i trust that the go wide token artifact synergy if you imagine think about this just 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 imagine just imagine for a second that you went tinker's toad on three thousand moon smithy on four instantly win the game you just win you literally can't lose it's literally unlosable how do you lose i don't know i don't know if it's possible to lose that game <laughs> tap all my things make a land does the land come back untapped? Oh my god, it does. So then then you cast a one drop, and that's an artifact, and you just win. You literally just win. You straight up win the game. So that's that's the that's the nuts turn. That's the combination. But I do think this card actually does quite a bit. Um, really solid, like, glue-type card. It looks kind of unassuming, but I actually, I actually do kind of like this. Unstable Glyph Bridge. Three... Wait, wait, for an artifact, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it for each player, choose a creature with power of two or less that player controls, then destroy all creatures except the creatures chosen this way. So it's basically a wrath that you can keep one each one of each player's things alive. You have to keep one of your opponent's things alive, but you can also keep one of your things alive, which is nice. And you can craft with artifact for three white white to turn it into a 5-3 golem with flying. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell during your turn, they can't attack you. Uh, each opponent who attacks you can't cast spells. So basically either they can cast spells or attack you, is what the golem says. Unless they kill it, and then they can do both. But yeah, I mean the golem is pretty good. It's nice to just have the ability to make this large flying like golem after you wrath your opponent. It seems kind of decent. Um, again, it's not a full wrath, but um, if they don't have any creature's power to or less it is for them, you get to keep your best creature and keep their worst creature. So if they have like a 1-1, one -one, they just get left with the 1-1. One -one. I'm pretty high on this. I think it's good. Solid card. Got to build around it a little bit. It is a wrath, but yeah. Vanguard of the Rose. One and a white for a 3-1. You can pay one and sacrifice another creature artifact, and it gains indestructible until end of turn and tap it. We've seen this effect many a time. Always solid. This one is especially pricey compared to some of the ones we've seen in the past, but 
the effect is always very strong because it enables you to basically turn off your opponent's removal if you want, and sometimes you don't want to, and sometimes you just let it resolve. So it's uh, it's nice. It's a nice little card here. Really good two drop. And the last card in white is Warden of the Inner Sky. Single white mana for a 1-2, human soldier. As long as it has three or more counters on it, it has flying and vigilance. Tap three untapped artifacts and or creatures you control, put a plus one plus one counter on it. And scry one, activate only as a sorcery, which is killer! Killer! If you could activate this anytime, I would be putting it in tier one, but you can't, so it gets bumped down two full tiers because having to tap all of your stuff uh, during your turn is very bad, and you leave yourself with the inability to block, and all you get is a plus one plus one counter and scrying one. So this just seems a little slow, but it is probably fine, because it's a one drop. Thank you for coming to my TED talk about one drops. Um, and that's it, that's all the white cards, so I'm done talking about the white cards in this set. So I hope you enjoyed, gleaned some insight from a person that has not played with the cards and doesn't know anything about them and mostly just is like kind of good a little bit sometimes at the game, so hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I will see you next time, and if not, I probably won't, but uh, that's okay. See ya.